Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a beautiful song, the morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's so sunny here. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I say it's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's true. Everybody's in different seasons of life. I don't know what season of life. Some are in their happy season. Some are in their morning mood. Some are in their angry mood. Some are in whatever mood. Whatever mood you are, try to turn it to a happy mood. Try to turn it to a glad mood. Try to turn it. Are you hearing me? Tell the devil, this is not my mood. This is not what I'm created to be. Yes, situation around you might have tell you you have no reason to be happy. The situation in you might be pointing house rain, troubling your marriage, your children, I mean your finances, your place of work. No work. They might be pointing a lot of things. But tell the devil, tell the devil, I have every reason to be happy that Jesus died and resurrected for me. He saved my soul because he lived. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. My life is wild, I live in just. Because he lives, because I know he holds my future. My life is wild, I live in just because he lives. My sharing brahalala my sendaraba. Because he lived, you can face tomorrow. Because he lived, you can come out of that situation. Because he lived, your sun will rise again. Because he lived, there shall be a sunshine on you again. Because he lived, all fear are gone. All fear, every type of fear is gone. Fear of marriage breakage is gone. Fear of divorce is gone. Fear of children is gone. Fear of death is gone. Fear of failure is gone. Fear of being ejected from your house or whatever is gone. The Bible said, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. I don't have any reason to carry my burden. I don't have any reason to carry my cares again. For he lives, I can face tomorrow. All my cares is cast on the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Yes. All my cares and burden is cast to him. He lives, I can face tomorrow. He lives. I have every reason to be happy. I have a reason to praise the Lord. I have a reason to praise the Lord in my life. I have a reason to praise my King. You have a reason to praise Jesus. You must have a reason to magnify His name. You must have a reason to bless His name in your life. You have a reason to praise the Lord in my life. I have a reason to praise the Lord. We have a reason, greater reason. We have reasons to praise the Lord. Oh, he's so good. While you were yes sinners, he died 
and the cross. I pray that the word you hear today will come out with fire. And the word of God will bless you. And God will bless you. So share off, share off, share off. Forget about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new brand day. You have not seen it today. It might be today that miracle will happen. It might be today that peace will come. It might be today that joy will come. It's a new brand day altogether. The Lord has created it and made it and fixed you into it for you to see better days. Are you hearing me? Tell the devil, you're a liar. What mistake have you made in life and the devil keep troubling you, keep reminding you about your yesterday. Your yesterday have been taken care of by God himself. Are you hearing me? Tell the devil, you're a liar and you're a loser. My yesterday has gone. Every mistake I've made have been under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free. Oh, from sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. The precious blood of Jesus set me free. The wonderful blood of Jesus set me free. Narrow is the way. That leads to heaven and eternity. Narrow. Narrow. Very narrow. Broad. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. You're following the narrow way. That is why it seems it is the way it is. Mm. Along the narrow way, you see trials, you see temptations. But you will overcome. You will overcome. You will overcome. Mmm. When the battle is over, I shall wear the crown. You will wear the crown. I will wear the crown. When the battle is over, we shall wear the crown in the new Jerusalem. I want you to write down. No matter what happened to him, I will not leave my journey halfway. No matter what happened, no matter my situation, no matter my tears, no matter whatever, I will never ever leave my journey halfway. I will make it to an end. I will make it to the end. I will make it to the end and glorify the name of the Lord. And the name of Christ Jesus will be glorified and magnified to be. Yes, I have God of strength. I have God of power. I have God of honor. I have God of mind, power, majesty. That same God will see me literally through in everything in Jesus' name. Because he lived. You can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear loving Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, the immortal and invisible God, the God of honor, power, might, and majesty, have your way. Father, we are here this morning, O oh Lord, to hear your word. Some it is the afternoon, some it is the evening. But I call upon the name of the Lord. I call upon the name of the Lord. I call upon the name of the Lord. That the mighty great grace of God comfort our ways. And let the name of Christ be glorified. For unto the Lord be other glory. Thank you for the great answer, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God will speak the word to us. They, that had them had, had to be broken. That situation will be challenged and will be somersaulted. And we shall be on top and the devil will be below. And the glory of God will never be upon our lives. Speak and let life come back to us alone. As your name is glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Amen. As I was praying right now, I just closed my eyes as I was praying. I saw a very a pillar. I saw a very high pillar, just like a pole. It's very strong. Standing somewhere. And flood started coming, started coming, started coming. And the flood was halfway that tall pole. The flood has gotten to the halfway of it. And then it is still standing strong. And the Lord said, this pole represents somebody here. That pillar represents somebody. He said, the affliction and situation of your life has come so high. So high that it wants to pull you down and push you down. And the Lord said, I should tell you that he is with you, that you shouldn't be discouraged for any reason. You shouldn't be discouraged for any reason. He said, that water will soon debase. It will soon dry off. It will soon go down. And then your foundation remains firm. Please let your foundation always be in the word of God. 
But you see, you have a firm foundation. That is why all these things could not do anything. Because you have a firm foundation. To God be other glory in Jesus' name. We're talking, we're still talking about faithfulness. Actually, I wanted to skip this because we have gotten to part eight. I think today is part nine of it. Yet, the Lord is still leading me to still talk about faithfulness. Are you faithful? Are you faithful? Are you faithful? Are you doing it the way of God? Are you doing it with the standard of God? Are you obeying God? Are you working with the principles and standard of the Lord? Are you doing it the way the Lord instructs and the way the Lord wants you to do it? Are you doing it the way of Jehovah? Are you doing it the way of ancient of the days? Hmm. Because he lives, you confess tomorrow. Because he lives, all oh, fear is gone. Hallelujah. Mm. This God is so real. I don't know the what you're passing through right now. You might be in tears in the secret and just put on a smile in the public. That's better. That's better. That's better. That's better. He's a failure. The devil is a failure. But he will not let you know that he's a failure. So don't let him know you're passing through pains. But your pain will turn to gain. Your pain will turn to gain. We are running a race. Heavenly race. Heavenly race. Heavenly race. To meet my Redeemer. I am running a race to meet my Redeemer. I am running a race to meet my Redeemer. Oh, heavenly race. Heavenly race. Heavenly race. To meet my Redeemer. We are running a race to meet our Redeemer. We are running a heavenly race. Christ be honored in Jesus' name. Today we're talking about faithfulness in preaching the word of God and the witnessing. Are you a faithful preaching the word? Are you faithful preaching the word of God? Are you also a faithful witness of Christ? Are you a person a, a, a faithful witness of Christ? Are you? God demand this faithfulness in us, round about us. God will open our eyes. Look at, you are a child of God. Have you won a soul? When a woman got married, after staying for one month, two months, three months, six months, getting to a year, she will get worried. Ah, why have I not taken him? But you have been in the Lord for three years, four years, five years. Have you won a soul before? God, do this for me. God, do this for me. There are ones God said we should do for him. Are we doing those ones? When we do the one God said we should do for him, God will do the one he has promised us. Most of the time, we're the one holding the miracles, we're the one holding the blessings of the Lord. We're the one holding ourselves from not moving forward. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word in season. And out of season. Preach the word in season. And out of season. Hmm? Preach it in season and out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort all. Long suffering and doctrine. You know, we don't like message of rebuke again. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. The Bible said, preach the word in season, out of season. Reprove. No, 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 no. We don't like it again. Reprove. Teaching the person you are wrong. You made this prophecy, it was strong. Look at why it was wrong. That is reproving. Rebuke from sin. Exhort, encourage the mind of people. Then with patience, long suffering, with the sound doctrine of the law. Are you a faithful witness? Are you a faithful? The Bible, God wants us to, you know, duplicate Jesus all over the world. If you're duplicating, I'm duplicating. This was duplicating. Oh, before understanding Jesus, we feel all over the world. But when we keep our quiet room, and mood and quiet and silent. We don't preach him. Will he come and preach himself? He's ready to come and do that again. Oh. Many of us are very busy preaching ourselves. We come in Facebook, we still are this, 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 we still are this. We are advertising ourselves. What for? Let's preach Jesus. This opportunity God gave us in Facebook and there's so many other social media, WhatsApp and what others. Instagram, Imo, 
and whatever. Let's use it to preach Jesus. Are you hearing me? Let's use this opportunity to preach Jesus of Nazareth. The mighty man of our Lord. It will get a long way to help us. Hmm? When we are doing this, we are building ourselves up. Are you a faithful witness? This is what God expects of you. Are you a faithful preacher? Are you faithfully preaching Jesus? Do you know you can stay in the midst of people you don't know? You stay with them to go. In preaching the word of God, there are two things. There are two ways of preaching the word of God. You preach the word of God with your mouth and you preach the word of God with your life. So many people can preach the word of God with their mouth and destroy it with their character immediately. How can you be preaching a different thing and your lifestyle is a different thing? How can you say don't kill when you kill, when you still gossip people and slander the name of people? That is why the Bible said, reprove, rebuke. That's what the scripture said. Then exhort. Hmm. Sin need not to be among us, neither mentioned. We need not to live in unrighteousness and iniquity for any reason. We have to urge them out. So that the cleanliness of God will come and power of purity will come. Are you faithful preaching? When last did you preach to a sinner? When last did you tell a sinner that Jesus said you need to be born again? When last did you tell a sinner about hell? When last did you post something about repentance, about salvation in Facebook? Preach the word in season and out of season. That's what they say. When it is convenient, preach it. When it is not convenient, still preach it. Let this be a guide to you. God wants us to preach the word. He wants us to be preaching the word of God in and out every day. He wants us to go about preaching the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever the devil tells you, do you think it's convenient? Do you think it's time to preach the word? Tell him the Bible said, in season and out of season, when it is convenient and when it is not convenient, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. When it is convenient, preach the word. When it is not convenient, preach the word. May the mighty hand of God help us to preach the word in season and out of season in Jesus' name. The Lord reign it. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? We're going to read another portion of the scripture again. What God is telling us, the power in his word. What do God want us to preach? Because there is power, there is power, and there is power in the word of God. I love that song that said, There is power, there is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, oh, oh there is power. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 28. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give this city. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, that's not what I actually want to read. I said 23, not 32. Sorry, 23. Okay. Are you there now? Okay. 23, just get me verse 28. Okay. 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 Jeremiah chapter 23, from verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 23, from verse 28. Jeremiah chapter 23, from verse 28. The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. When you have it, you say, look at the dream I have. Okay? Let him tell a dream. And he that had my word. Ma, 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 ma. Yo, the word of God, he that had, and, the, and he that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. That means, live it and speak it. Show it by action. Show it by character. That's why I told you these are the two ways of preaching the word of God. You preach the word of God with your mouth and you leave it. There are places you go, you may not have chance or opportunity of preaching the word. You know, but the life you live will be emulated by people. The life you live will change people. You may not see, you get a community, you may not have time to go, you may not have other opportunities to minister to them. But when they see the life, when they see the good things you're doing for them, when they're saying that, they'll say, ah, this man is a man of God. You will be justified because the mighty hand of God is the God is God of justification. 
Okay? The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? Says the Lord. What is the chaff to the wheat? Chaff cannot be compared with the weight of the wheat. Chaff will just go. You can mix two of them. Let chaff go. When you're preaching the word of God, the ritual will be coming out. The chaff will be going. Look at what the... Okay? Look at verse 29. Why must we preach this word? This word is too powerful. He said, It's not my wall like as a fire. Mama, 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 I like that. He said, My word is like a fire. The word of God is fire. Some say, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. It's not my wall like as a fire, says the Lord. And like a hammer. The break it, the rock in pieces. Is your heart, any heart that is like a rock, the word of God will break it into pieces. He said, he that have dreams, said, I dreamt about this, I dreamt, but he that have my word, preach it faithfully. Are you faithful in preaching the word of God? Can you say, Lord, every day I must talk to somebody about Jesus. Every day I must have to talk about Jesus. I must have to tell a sinner about Jesus. Even if there's no sinner around me presently where I am, then that person that is already born again, I can lift him up, I can lift her up, I can encourage his mind, I can encourage her mind to preach Jesus of Nazareth, the King of King, God of God, and the Lord of Lord. Preach the word in season and out of season. Preach the word day in, day out. Preach the word in the morning, afternoon, and night. Are you faithful in sharing the word of God? God wants us to be faithful in sharing his word. So that when we're doing that, we know that our rewarder is coming. Our reward is in heaven. Not to, for your sinner pastor to reward you. Not for anybody to reward you. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. That's why we sing this song when we got born again newly in those days. We, uh, we sing this song. My rewarder, my rewarder is coming. My rewarder, my rewarder is coming. We will clap it. We will dance it because our rewarder is coming. Man is not the rewarder. God is the rewarder. God is the rewarder that will reward you every deal and everything. Our rewarder is Jesus of Nazareth and our rewarder is coming. Our rewarder will keep on coming and keep on blessing on. Our rewarder is in heaven. Our rewarder is great. Our rewarder is faithful. Our rewarder should be honored forever and ever. Hallelujah. To God our King our Lord be our the glorious who bless the ancient of the days. Our rewarder is there. Are you hearing me? Preach the word in season and out of season. Preach it when it's convenient or when it's not convenient. Preach the word of God. So that you be a faithful servant of the Lord. Make Jesus known. If you love him, you will be free to introduce him. Do you know? If you have a friend you love so much, you will be free to be introducing your friend. Oh, this is my friend. I love him. I love her. This is my friend. I love him. I love her. You keep on introducing your friend to everybody. How much more he that died on the cross of Calvary. He that lavish his love on you while he was. Yes, sir, now Jesus came and die. That's what Romans chapter 8 verse 5 said, uh, 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 5, 8, that while we were yet sinner, Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary. So what are we trying to say? Preach the word in season. He so said, when you have a dream, say it. He said, preach my word, for my word is like a fire. Mama, 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 mama. Any sinner that first is having fuel, the word of God will be fire, spark on him, catch him, and begin to burn. You want to burn, it will burn off the chaff. And then the, the wheat in the person will come out. The good in the person will come out. The reality in the person will come out. He said, my word is like a hammer. Whenever you are preaching it, no matter. That's why the word will touch everybody that hears it. Whenever you are this, it can come, come as a fire. It can come as a hammer. Bim! The heart will be broken. The hardened heart will be broken. No wonder when the word of God come, the kings of the air that have the heart of stone, it come like a hammer to them and they will begin to shake. And those that have the fear of God, the word will come like a fire and purify them the more. So whichever way you are, if you have a hardened heart, expect the word of God as a hammer. If you're already free in your heart, you have fear of God, expect the word of God like fire. When it comes, it will purify and light a more fire to you, and you will be who God wants you to be. So by the divine grace of God and by the authorities in his world, God is there to help us. God is there to be a father and a king. God is there to be our everything. May his name alone be glorified and praised forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who bless the ancient of the days. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. Let's see First Timothy chapter, no, Titus chapter 
1 verse 9 Titus chapter 1 verse 9 Titus chapter 1 verse 9 He said holding fast the faithful word Oh my God are you faithful It takes only a faithful man to hold faithful the word of God holding fast the faithful word as he had thought that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exalt and to convince the gainsayers. Are you hearing it? Hold him fast, the faithful word, as he has thought. When you hold it fast, as the word, the word is teaching you. A lot of people are no more going for the word of God. A lot of people are no more going to be taught the word. So many people have become apostles before they become disciples. So many people will repent immediately and become apostle and become prophet and become evangelist before they will be discipled. That is why negative prophecies are coming. That is why the opportunity by the power of darkness to use a lot of people, to deceive a lot of people too, are there. I hear what I'm saying. He said, hold fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both exhort and to convey the against her. By sound, that means if there is sound doctrine, that means there are negative doctrine. There are doctrines that are not sound. There are doctrines that are not of the Lord. There are doctrines that are not believable. There are doctrines that doesn't work in good times with the word of God. But believe God and good things will come. And the blessedness of Jehovah Lord and his greatness shall come. Are you a faithful child of God? You're expecting God to do this for you. God give me peace in my marriage. God give my child this. Lord, let this happen. Lord, this happen. You are so much in demand. Demanding a lot of things. But the one the Lord demand that you live a holy life. Are you doing it? The one the Lord demand that you win a soul. Are you doing it? The one the Lord demand that say, let's have fellowship. Pray, pray, pray. Sing and worship. Praises. Pray, pray, pray. Let's come together. Are you equally doing this one? You only can't see what God have not done. What of the ones you have not done yourself? This is not a time for us to, you know, play hanky panky or be annoyed and be offended in the Lord. The Bible says, "Blessed is he that not offended in me." So many people have prayed and prayed, and they felt their condition is so worse than that. They have been long in the world with the devil, but they rushed into Christianity now. Instead of them to learn, keep quiet, study the Word of God for one year, two years, three years, four years, five, six, seven, eight, nine years, even ten years, to knowing the Word of God and study the Word of God. After one or two years, they are worrying God. God is done. Is that no more time? When will you remember me? Is it possible my miracle will happen again? This and this and that. They kept asking the Lord, are you fulfilling your part? When you fulfill your part, the Lord will equally fulfill his own part. Stop being in a head, child of God. Stop living in anxiety, child of God. Stop living in worry, child of God. Relax. We're going somewhere. There's a place where we're going. There's no death there. There's a place where we're going. There's no disturbance there. There's a place where we're going where everything is complete. There's no sorrowful man there. There's no tearful man there. Everything we're going to do there is to the glory of God. No man is living in tears in heaven except the tears of joy. When you get there, remember all that Jesus did for you. Many of us will not even understand God and the glory of God now until when we get to heaven. I pray that the same glory will rapture you on the day of rapture so that you're going to make heaven and Christ be glorified. I am asking, are you a faithful preacher? Are you preaching the word of God? Are you a faithful witness of the Lord? Do you witness Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Do you witness his goodness and power? Do you witness his favor? Do you witness everything around about him? God is expecting that something good will happen. And Christ's name shall be glorified forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To God our Lord be all the glory. To God our Father and our Lord be all the might and power majesty. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To God alone be other glory in Jesus' name. Let's see, are you a faithful witness? Oh, you hear the word of God, and God said, this is what I want you to do. You said, no, I'm going to do it my way and not the way of the Lord. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you doing this? The word of the Lord is past funding, it's true. The word of the Lord is hard, it's true. The word of the Lord is difficult, it's true. But he will give you grace to do them. He will give you grace to live by it. Do you know to forgive is not easy. For you to forgive is never, never, never easy at all. But ask him for grace. Sometimes you can forgive and it's, your heart is still bleeding gently. Your heart is still bleeding gradually. Tell God, give me a complete healed heart. I want to forgive. 
forgive and do as if nothing has happened. That is true forgiveness. That is when forgiveness is on the highest point. When you forgive and do as if nothing has happened, if you see the person, the way you relate before, the way you take the person before, you don't have attachment attached to it again. When you hear about the person, you don't just... Mm, Forget about that. No, no, no. You don't do that. You make up your mind because you are going somewhere. You are going to heaven. You see, when Judas come, even after he has betrayed Jesus of Nazareth, he still came. The Lord didn't say, oh, go, 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 go. The Lord still greeted him. By the time he wanted to give him a kiss, he said, Ah, you sell a son of mine with a kiss. Let's still learn how to love, even in difficult situations. Love is the most scarcely, uh, uh, scarce commodity on earth. Love is so scarce. One of the most scarce. Uh, uh, this thing on earth, commodity, ingredient, one of the Christian ingredients that is lacking is love. Everybody's on retaliation. You did this to me. You said this thing about me. You talk this thing about me. No, let's study the word of God and live by the principles of the word of God. Look at what happened here. Look at what happened here in the book of Jeremiah again. In the book of Jeremiah, let's see what happened in chapter 42. Let's read from 5 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 42, 5 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 42, 5 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 42, 5 to 6. Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true, faithful witness between me, if we do not, even according to all the things for the equit, the Lord that God shall send unto us. Send it to us, verse 6. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send, we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. These people came to him all. They want to prove they are faithful, but they are not. Jeremiah, come, 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 come. How can we have a prophet like you and we don't know the will of God? How can we have a child of God like you? Somebody that commune with the Lord. Somebody the Lord have called. Please tell us the will of God, whether it hurt us, whether it's good for us, we must do it. We have no other option than to do the word of God. We have no other option than to do the will of God. We must do it, we must do it, we must do it. And Jeremiah thought that he was talking with the Greek people. Jeremiah went in to get answers from the Lord. When Jeremiah got an answer from the Lord, look at what the people said. He got at them again. Look at verse 19 through verse 22. Look at verse 19 again. The Lord has said concerning you, O oh, you remnant of Judah, go you not into Egypt. No, certainly that I have advised you this day. For you dissembled in your heart when you sent me unto the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us. Unto the Lord our God, and according unto that the Lord our God shall say, So declare unto all, and we will do it. And now I have this day declared it to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, nor anything for the which he has sent me unto you. Now therefore know certainly that he shall die by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence, in the place whither you deserve to go and so John, you see to that. They went and told them, look at what Jehovah have said. Uh, I've gotten an answer from the Lord. Look at what God has spoken about us. Look at what Jehovah have said in this issue. Yes, this is time for you. This is a great time for you to have a great change. This is a time for you for a miracle to happen. They said, Jeremiah, you said the Lord said this thing to you. You said, yes, now, nah. you people send me to go to God. You people send me, yes. To go and hear what the Lord will say. The people told him, Jeremiah, we will not do it. We will not do it. It's true, the Lord has said it. He said, we should not go into Egypt. To Egypt, we must go. To Egypt, we must enter. What a stubborn human being. It's not today human being started being uh, stubborn. You know? It's not today. They have been stubborn from the time immemorial. Oh, what is man that God carried much of him? What is it? They, 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 they say, please tell us. Please tell us the will of God. What is God talking about us? 
What is Jehovah saying about all? Whatever thing God said, that is what we will do. Whatever thing God said, that uh, they want to be faithful, but they let that on to be unfaithful. Most of the time you say, man of God, pray for me. Tell me what God is talking. Direct me on what God is saying. And then the word of God says, live a clean life. He says, is it possible? Live a holy life. He says, is it real? The holiness life you live is the only age you give to the devil. The devil is brilliant. The devil is wise. He's even wiser than you, more brilliant than you. The devil is richer than you, than everything. But what you have that the devil doesn't have is the power to live a holy life. Power to please God and be like God. The devil can never be like God again. Because you change his nature to the nature of doing evil things. But when you are born again, seed of God, the grace to be given, a child of God will be given to you. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 4, uh, yes, as of the Apostle chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, For there is no other name given under heaven, whereby we must be saved. As of the Apostle chapter 4, verse 12, no other name given under heaven, whereby we must be saved, except through the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The name of the Lord Jesus is a strong tower. The Bible says, The righteous run it into him, and they are preserved. Child of God, can't you run into Jesus today, and he will preserve you. Give your life to Jesus, and you will have nothing to blame. Give your life to him, you will be on the laughing side. Jeremiah spent time seeking the face of the Lord. After 10 days, the Lord spoke to him. Look at what to tell my people. Tell them not to go down to Egypt. And when Jeremiah finished speaking, they said to Egypt, we must go. Oh, oh, oh you don't want us to go to Egypt? You don't know my granddad and so many other folk could come back. Onions, this sweet food, they come from there. And you say, we shouldn't go there. You want hunger to destroy us? Where can your God supply out food from? Jeremiah, we want to tell you that you have found, we have heard what the Lord said. But to Israel, Jerusalem, he said, um, to Egypt, he said, we will not go. To Egypt, we must go. For that is our only abode. That is our only comfort. That is our only relief. That's our only help. We must go back to Egypt. May you never go back to Egypt. Even if they are choosing leader to go to Egypt, tell them you are not part of it. May you never go back to Egypt in Jesus' name. The God of honor, power, might, and majesty will strengthen you. God will help you. God will make you to stand. Are you faithful in preaching Jesus? Are you faithful in representing Jesus of Nazareth? Are you around faithful in what I have asked you to do? If the Lord have told you to do that, why not do it for him? Why not do it for him and let his name alone be glorified and praised and let his name alone be worshipped and magnified. If the Lord has spoken concerning that, then who am I and who are you to do it? Who are you and who am I to do it? Okay, from uh, uh, where we read before from verse 22, from verse 22, okay, therefore know certainly that you shall die. The Lord judgment came. No, certainly that you shall not. Oh, you refuse to do what I tell you to do. You refuse to do it my way. And you want to do it your own way. It shall never be well with you. Oh, look at 43 verse 1. Chapter 43 verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the ways, the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God has set him to them. Even all this word, look at verse 3, 2. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hashira, okay, Hachia, and Jen, Jehanan, the son of Kerel, and all proud men saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speaker falsely. Hey, the sent him all. He went and saw the face of the Lord for ten days old. Thou speaker falsely, the Lord our God had not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Barak the son of Nerim settles thee on against us for, it, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might be, that they might put us to death and carry us away captive into Babylon. They don't believe. They were the one that called him and said, pray. Are you a faithful witness? When you hear the word of God, what do you do with the word of God? So many people have found the word of God. They did nothing with the word of God. Why are you taking light the word of God? The Bible said in Mark eleven twenty four, whatever thing you desire, when you pray, believe you have it, and it's going to be your portion. Mark eleven twenty four, whatever thing you desire, when you pray, believe you have it, and it shall be your own. But today, when we believe, do we really believe it's our own? Do we really believe it works? 
May God show us mercy. May God show us. That is why you see people giving one particular prayer request to 20 different groups, to 30 different, they will be praying and praying. From year to year, they will pray, you say amen. From year to year, you, they pray, you say amen. I'm waiting for the result. I'm waiting for the manifestation. Result will not come. Have confidence in the Lord and get to Him and pray. And make that decree. Live a clean life, live a holy life, live a righteous life. Live for the Lord. The Bible says so whether we are dead, we are the Lord. Whether we are alive, we are the Lord. In their death in your life, you are the Lord. The Lord is the owner of your strength and the Lord is the owner of your life. Then what are you doing with your own life? Do you think it is easy to live? No, it's not easy to live. Your life is in the hands of the Lord. That is why the Lord is life, our life is in Him. It's, a, it's the same God we provoke. He knows you. He knows everything about you. It's a matter of trying to check his body. He will vanish on that. This God is so great. He's so a mighty God. He's so marvelous God. So I want to call you child of God. How faithful are you in the service of God? In doing things for God? In using your own system and your own body? May the mighty hand of God help us. May the mighty hand of God help us. And let the name of Christ Jesus be glorified. For to him alone be other glory in Jesus' name. Are you faithful? Child of God, are you faithful? Are you a faithful witness? In the service of God, are you faithful? In serving God. Are you faithful in serving Jehovah Lord? Are you faithful in saying, God, I will do your word. I will live by your word. I will do whatever thing you said I should do. Because the word of God is forever settled in heaven. I love what the Sammy said. He said, Oh Lord, forever, your word is settled in heaven. The word of God is forever and ever, and ever and ever settled in heaven. In the service of God. Are you doing it with all your head? Look at what the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Let's start reading from verse number. 21. Matthew chapter 25 from 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thee. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Hey, I believe one day you, one day me, will be told, enter the rest of joy. Enter the rest of gladness. Enter the jo a joyous place, a glorious place, a place where the angels are the musicians, a place where God himself enjoyed the music, and we, the saints, will join him to join the music. The angels will be singing the song, and we shall be on the enjoying side. Hallelujah. Purify yourself with this word. Live a clean life and a holy life. Be a faithful witness of Christ. Go inside the interior places. That's not one statement St. Paul made. Whenever I remember this statement, St. Paul made. I begin to say, wow. I begin to say, wow. I begin to say, Lord, be a help to me. Lord, be a help to me. Daddy, help me. Help me. Help me to advance. Help me to go far. When I remember this statement made by St. Paul, St. Paul was really out to preach the word of God. He was so determined. He was, he was saying that Jesus must be preached in and out. Jesus must be preached every day. May the mighty hand of God help us. May the mighty hand of God see us thoroughly true in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, you are holy, and forever you are God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and forever you are God. I thank you, Lord, you are holy, holy Lord. And forever you are God. When will I develop the interest of preaching Jesus every day? Preaching Jesus in season and out of season. Preaching Jesus to my generation and generation. Look at what St. Paul said in the book of Romans 
St. Paul said, Romans chapter 15, verse 20. Romans chapter 15, verse 20. St. Paul made a powerful statement there. He said, Yeah, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. I am preaching Christ, not even where Christ is known, not to the people that have converted already, not the people, people are very busy, converting people from church to church, converting people from their church, then convert them to their own church. Go and talk to Eros Shina. Go and talk to that man that is not going to church. Go and talk to that man, that woman that does not believe in Jesus, that boy that does not believe in Jesus. Talk to him. The Bible said the word of God is hammer and the word of God is fire. Oh, so that if he's so hardened, the word of God will come like a hammer and break him. And when it's broken, the word of God will shine him and renew him and revive him. And then refine him again. The word that I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. Child of God, are you faithful in serving God? Are you faithful in doing what God said you should do? Yes, you might be faithful in paying your tithe. It's okay. But are you faithful in preaching the word of God? Are you faithful in living exemplary life of Christian? You don't know you're passing through a trial period of life. I know who I'm talking to. You're passing through a trial period of life. Every day you remember it, you will sigh. When you want to forget this week, next week you remember again. Do you think you're making it right? Do you think you're getting it right? I want to let you know that there is a God who knows what to do. There is a God who knows how to reward you. No matter what happened, no matter where you are in the church right now, the position you are, the way they're suppressing you, the way they're hindering you, the way they don't want you to rise, let me tell you, God will make you to rise. One young man was doing very well in the town as a pastor. Where somebody went and bribed the person that does the transfer. The person was bribed and the person took that man that was a man of God who had labored there to another remote area in the village and brought his brother to be the partaker of the golden thing, to be the partaker of the wealth of that church. The church started having problems. And that brother went there and God helped him. He was in the remote area and God helped him. He prayed for a madman. And the mad came to his son said, the brother said no. The brothers went and bought him a car and began to give him a lot of gift and the family loved him. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Child of God, don't get this Spared. Don't get discouraged. Don't quit right now. This is not the time for you to quit. The only one want you to know is that God possess me. Daddy possess me. Lord possess me by the power of the mind. If devil and demon could possess people and they begin to be mad for them, they begin to do what they don't want they begin to do what they don't want to do as a, a result of alcohol or any of the hard dro drug they have taken. But you yourself, you can be sunk and got drunk in the Holy Spirit. So that you will have more grace and power to do the work of God. May the mighty hand of God help us to do the work of God in God's style and in God's lovely way. What am I trying to say, you child of God? It is well with the righteous, the God of honor, power, might, and majesty, the God of divine mercy is round about all. God wants you to be a faithful witness of His. God wants you to be somebody faithful in preaching the word of God. God wants you to be faithful in service. Wants you to be faithful, be a servant, faithful servant of the Lord. Serve the Lord with all your heart. Serve the Lord with all your mind. You are not lost serving God. That's what so many people, if you see what, what they're giving to God, if you see what they're serving God, let me tell you, any man of God that comes away, any faithful child of God that comes away, the way you serve God is the way you should have served him. Some people will say, no, 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 the great people according to their level and then some they use plastic stick to give them food, plastic plates. To give them some they use a better play, some they use expensive, some they use most excellent and qualified. Ah, this is the president of the nation now. Nah. This is this and this and that and that and that. And that. that is our own major and that is our own grade. God is calling you today and say, Are you faithful, my son? Are you faithful, my daughter? Are you serving me faithfully? If God comes now, will you go with him? If he comes now, will he say, Yes, you are doing it well? If God comes now, will he God said, You have done it in the way that pleased me? Look at your reward. Will you receive reward when Jesus comes. Yes, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. So many of us are building another man's foundation. They have helped other people to fulfill their ministry. Look, let me tell you, there are people God called to pioneer a ministry. While there are those who are called to help people who are pioneering the ministry already. Maybe God has not called you, you want to be a GS, you want to be a duo, you rush into forming a church. But God has not called you. Somebody stay quiet. They are humble. They are being under a man. And that's why that 
God have endowed him with every blessing, financially, physically. He still said, no, I am not going back to anything. I am not going back to the world. I will not deviate. I love the song that said, I will never, never go back to the world. Never go back to the world. Never go back to the world anymore. I will never, never go back to the world. Oh, go back to the world. I will never go back to the world anymore. Are you planning to go back to the world? What is taking you back to the world? Going back to the world is going back to death. Going back to the world is going back to destruction. Going back to the world is taking your direct visa to hell. Going back to the world is death sentence. Going back to the world is losing yourself of your protection and preservation. God is so faithful and well able. God has done it before. He will still do it because great is the faithfulness of our God. We worship the ancient of the days, the Rafa Are you faithful in any form? Are you faithful in any way? Are you serving a true God? Are you serving God of holiness and righteousness? Who is talking to you and telling you now that no matter what you pass through, no matter what your stretcher is, it is well. Jehovah can see you through. And his name shall be glorified and magnified. Shall we begin to pray? Mashanda Rababa, Makunda Dada. Can you begin to pray? Say, God, I've had your word. Am I faithful at all? Am I doing the work of God? Am I really preaching? What do other brethren see me to be? Am I faithful in any form, in any way? God help me to be faithful. Daddy help me to be faithful. Jesus help me to be faithful. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I want to be all around faithful. So many people are faithful, but not on the area of finances. No, 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 no. They will not tell you the truth. Even some husband don't tell their wife their financial status. Oh, child of God, don't be unfaithful. Be faithful to God. Shall we pray? Mighty man of valor, look at that person. They are crying right now. Oh, Lord, look at her. Look at him crying. Believe in you that he wants to make heaven. Father, grant him grace to make heaven. Grant him grace to make heaven. May the mighty hand of God grant you grace to make heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I begin to pray for my brothers and sisters. In any way, we have done contrary. Forgive us in Jesus' name. Can you say after me? Can you say, Lord Jesus? I am sorry I am a sinner. I repent of my sins this morning. And I come to you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me every unrighteousness. Forgive me every iniquity. Give me grace to be a child of God. Now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord hear your prayers. Forgive every sin and unrighteousness. And let the power to be a seed of God and seed of righteousness be given to you. And let the name of Christ be glorified for unto him beyond that glory forever. I cover you again in the precious blood of Jesus. Let it be well with you as Christ's name is magnified. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Child of God, are you faithful? Let your mind continue hurting you where you are not faithful until you take amen, until you make amen. God, give me grace. Let me disappear that Christ will appear. And let Christ be known everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.